Alright, so we already know that Node.js is single threaded. This means that it's going to use a single core of a processor in a system that could potentially have multiple cores. Even though it handles the load pretty well for a single threaded system, there's definitely room for optimization and clusters in Node.js are one way of doing so. The cluster module was introduced to scale an application execution by running worker or child processes on multiple processor cores. These processes share the same server port. So my application running on say port 3000 can now take multiple requests and handle them concurrently on the same port. Even though it's using the same port, these are separate processes at the end of the day. So they are going to have their own V8 instance, their event loop, their own memory and all that jazz. These processes again use the same IPC channels to communicate with the parent process. This is similar to what we saw in the previous video. Uh, we'll look at all the features as we move along in this tutorial. So let's just dive in. Okay, so inside this file, let me just install Express first. You don't necessarily have to install it, but I'll do it because we'll be using some extra packages later on to test the performance of the cluster application. So let's just quickly set up the Express project first. Alright, so we have our express app set up. Now I'll use the same blocking code from the previous video for this example. It's a simple while loop that is going to iterate this many times. It's a pretty big number. So it's going to block the event loop. This blocking code is going to be part of this heavy endpoint. And there's also going to be a light endpoint, which is going to resolve right away. And yeah, at the, at the very end, we'll just run the server at the designated port, which is 3000. So let me just quickly run this and see if everything's working. I'll be making a request to both of these endpoints using Postman. You can use any tool of your choice. Alright, so I have two tabs over here. One tab is for the heavy endpoint and the other one is for the light one. First, I'll need to start the server here. So let me just run the server. And now inside Postman, first I'll be running the heavy endpoint. I'll send the request to the heavy endpoint and then I'll send a request to the light one. So you can see that the light request has not yet returned the response. Ideally, it should have returned it right away. But it did return the response only after the heavy endpoint was done resolving the request. The light request had to wait for the heavy request to finish because the heavy request had blocked the event loop. This is the problem that we are trying to solve using clusters. I'll do this once again. I'll run the heavy endpoint first and right away I'll run the light endpoint, but you don't get the response from the light endpoint. Only when the heavy endpoint is done, will you get the response from the light endpoint because the execution starts only after the heavy request is done. So yeah, let's try to fix this using the cluster module. I'll create a separate file for this. So this one will have the cluster code in it. Actually, before even adding anything, let's first understand the flow of the application. So initially we had a single process and the single process used to resolve all the requests in case of this file. So if the heavy request blocks the event loop, any further requests I have to wait for the heavy request to resolve first and only then will they start executing. Now that we are going to use the cluster module, it's going to work a little differently. There will be two types of processes, a parent and a child process. Initially when the server starts, it's going to spin up a cluster of processes. After that, anytime someone makes a request to the server, the parent process is just going to direct the request to a child process. The child process will then ultimately resolve the request. So the parent process is just responsible for redirecting the request to a particular child process. The scheduling actually happens using different type of algorithms. The most common one is the round robin scheduling. But there are a few other ways through which the parent process schedules the request to the child processes. So yeah, let's just add a few things to the cluster file. I'll close this for now. We don't need the server. 
let me just import the cluster module so cluster so now the first thing that we'll do is check if the current process is a child process or a parent process so if it's a parent process we actually get a property from this cluster module itself called is master so cluster dot is master this will return a boolean value which will basically tell us whether it's a whether it's a parent process or the child process so if it is the master or the parent process then we'll be spinning up a cluster of child processes so we'll do that in a few minutes create a cluster if it's not a parent process then it means that it's a child process but now the child process is going to actually resolve the request so this entire piece of code can now be added to the else block we'll also oops we'll also need the express instance here because this is going to be for each and every process it's not going to be for one particular process so we'll be adding it inside this else block so now we'll need to add some things inside the if block as well so i'll just remove this so normally when creating a cluster of child processes it's better if it's equal to the number of cores in your system this is a good practice because if we create processes more than the number of cores it could lead to overhead in terms of scheduling so to get the number of cpus in your system or cores in your system you can use the os module present natively in node.js so i'll call it total cpus and get the value from the os module dot cpus dot length so based on this length i'll just run a for loop and i'll simply fork a new process from this parent process so based on the number of total uh, cores that i have in my system it's going to fork that many times so the system that i'm currently running this in is uh, is an eight core system so it's going to run eight times you'll see that once we once we run the server but yeah it will spawn eight child processes every time you fork a new worker it will respond with an online event so we can listen to that online event and basically console log a message or do something else for now we'll just console log a particular message to know whether the worker has spawned successfully or not so let's just add the event the event name is online and So anytime a worker goes online, it's going to print this message with the particular ID of that worker. There's one more event that we need to track. This event is the exit event. Whenever a worker dies, the cluster module emits the exit event. So in order to have no downtime for your application, we'll fork a new process the moment one goes down. This way, we'll always have a set of processes up and running even if any process goes down for any intentional or unintentional reasons. So the event name is going to be exit. And inside this, we get a bunch of things. The worker that went down, code. So there are a few exit codes that we have already discussed in the previous video and the signal so let me just first print a message saying that a worker has been down i'll add one more message saying that it's we are starting a new worker and at the very end we'll just simply poke a new process
so there's always going to be eight processes running in your application all right this looks good so now let me open up postman again and before that i'll run the server this time it's going to be scripts cluster there was an error here i'll do this again all right so you can see okay i'm getting undefined here which means there's some error over here right so the the property that we were looking for is not id it is pid so i need to change it for both of these events i'll restart this again and yeah now you see that we have eight different processes running with each of their ids displayed over here and yeah let's now make the request to these endpoints the heavy one and the light one all right so we are going to do the same thing that we did in the previous example i'm going to run the heavy request first and then the light request and in the previous example the heavy request had blocked light request so let's see whether that happens in this example as well so i run the heavy request and i then run the light one and you see that i get the response right away the heavy request is still running and i am executing the light one multiple times and i'm still getting the response this basically means that it's not at least blocking the event loop so now they're running in different processes and to verify that i can actually add the process id for both of these requests so before the actual message i'll just add the process id process dot the id and i'll do the same for the light request I'll save this I'll need to restart the server and now if I make the request you will see that I get the process ID as well the ID here is 63393 if I run this again it's being run by the same process but in case of the heavy request you see that the ID is different it's different from the one that ran the light request this is 63393 this is 63425 so these requests are being distributed between multiple child processes which is why we are not facing the blockage that we faced earlier now there's also an ipc channel established between every child and the parent process it's pretty similar to the previous videos we have a send method that is used to send messages and a message even that is used to listen for those messages so basically when you are uh, forking a child process you can simply save that specific worker instance in a variable so let's say I call it worker and now I can just listen for any messages that I get from the parent process so the event name I believe is message and whenever I get the message I'll simply just console log it so this is the event that is going to listen for the messages and I'll be sending the message from the light endpoint for this example so process dot send light request from parent I'll also add the process id so process dot pid i'll save this i'll restart the server and now if i make the heavy request here okay okay so the error that i was getting was because of the comma here i replaced it with the plus sign and it worked i don't know why but yeah so when i do send a light request i'll get this message from the parent so it's basically communicating from the parent to the child process you can do the you can do the same thing the other way around but that is basically the gist behind inter-process communication you can send messages back and forth between the parent and the child process so now that we have manually tested all of this and seen some benefits we still don't know whether this is really effective in a production environment so let's just do some load testing on this application uh, i have already installed the load test package when i set up the express app 
so we'll use that for the load test so let me just close this I'll clear this and let's just run the load test for the non-cluster application actually before even running the load test i'll remove a couple of zeros from this because it might take some extra time while running the load test so to do it faster i'll just keep it down to these many iterations now what i'll do is i'll just open up one more terminal inside this terminal i'm going to run the applications over here i'm going to keep two tabs for two terminals the first terminal is going to display the results for the non-cluster application and the second terminal is going to display the results for the cluster application so we'll just compare both of them side by side together and I'll, I'll be running the application on this terminal so let me just run the first one which is scripts i'll come back over here and run the load test the load test takes in a couple of parameters so the first one we are going to use is the number of requests so i'm going to use thousand requests for this particular test the second one is the concurrency parameter so basically it's going to simulate a real world environment wherein an application gets requests from multiple clients simultaneously and in this case it's going to be 100 simultaneous clients so i'll just add 100 and at the end we just add in the endpoint that we are going to test so it's going to be the heavy endpoint heavy and I run this okay actually I have not installed the load test command globally the load test package globally so instead I'll just do the same thing with npx so npx is then going to run the local instance of the load test so the one that we have installed in our application it's going to be here so npx will run that i'll just run this again and now it's going to work all right so let's just go over the key points here the total time that it took was about 30 seconds the request per second was 33 so it resolved 33 requests per second and the average time that it took for a particular request was 2869 seconds 2869 milliseconds so it's about three seconds now i'll just switch between the applications i'll run the cluster one it's working and i'll run the same load test again now if i run this this should give us some different results and we'll compare them side by side with the one that we see over here so yeah this was pretty quick actually the total time that it took was eight seconds so it's significantly better than the one over here which was 30 seconds the total request per second was 119 and the mean latency or the average time that it took for resolving a request was 800 milliseconds that is less than a second so you can clearly see that there are some performance optimizations when we use the cluster module in our application but now what we'll do is we'll switch between requests so we'll try to run the same load test but for the light request let's see what happens then so since we already have the clustered application running we'll uh, run the load test for that application first so i'll just clear this and instead of the heavy endpoint i'll just run the light one okay so this was pretty quick it took us about half a second to run the total load test it resolved about 1800 requests concurrently per second and the average time that it took to resolve a request was about 50 seconds 50 milliseconds now let's do the same for the we'll actually need to switch here so yeah and now let's try to run the load test for this one okay so the time that we see here now this is a bit weird actually the the time that it took in a non-clustered application was less than the clustered one the total number of requests per second resolved was also more than the clustered one and the mean latency again is less than the clustered application so you can see for the light endpoints load test 
the clustered application performed worse than the non-clustered application. Now, why is that? Now, you must understand that Node.js is designed for I/O operations, which for the most part do not block the call stack. So, since it knows how to deal with these kind of operations, uh, the one that we saw here, the light request. It doesn't make sense to add extra processes and then route each of the requests to those processes. It's just not uh, practical. Uh, however, in case of the CPU intensive blocking operations that we saw before this request, it's better if the number of requests is split between processes like we did with the cluster. So it ultimately comes down to what your application is designed for. If you have a microservice architecture and there is a particular service that deals with CPU intensive operations, you can spin up a cluster for that specific service and the rest can be handled by your single threaded node process because that particular node process at the end of the day is heavily optimized when it comes to IO operations. Yeah, that's pretty much how you'd work with clusters in your node application. It has its own set of caveats as we saw here and you need to be aware of them before adding it to your code base. This video is part of a series where we take a look at multitasking in Node.js. In the next video, we'll take a look at worker threads and how they perform in comparison to clusters. If you have any doubts or suggestions, you can put them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.